There are two words that I love to see when I start a 116 scale project. Scratch and dent. Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video series for this 116 scale radio controlled M4A376 Sherman tank. The model in this video belongs to my own personal collection. It's not for sale and or purchase. However, like I often mention, these build videos, I frequently take on commission build projects from models ranging between 135th scale and 16th scale. For availability and pricing information, that information would be best by contacting me through the email address listed below, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com. Just like with many of the other 116s on this channel, this build here received a bunch of modifications in both with the detail accessories as well as with also several of the mechanical components. We'll be going over all of these additions in this video set. Just like with the other 116 builds that are found on this channel, I can't just put everything in one video because it would be way too long. So I'm going to be breaking this video up into a multi-part series. This is going to be part one where I take the model and I show what it looks like at the project start. Here I'm going to give the build a thorough inbox review and I'm also going to be walking over several of the functions and the other mechanical systems that are found with the model. In addition to that, you're also going to see exactly why this model started out as a scratch and then special and some of the other attributes that go along with it. Part two of this video series is going to focus on the build itself where I'm going to take you guys along and show you exactly what I've done to this build, modifying it from the stock kit condition and bringing it up to the detailed state that you're going to see in part three. Part three is going to only focus on the external detail fittings as well as the paint and then of course part four is going to be this model being taken out for a thorough test drive. So as you can see there's going to be a ton of content coming your way and hopefully you all get to enjoy it. And here's the model at the start of the build. For the base starter kit I'll be utilizing this 116 scale ready to run M4 A3 76mm Sherman tank from Tegan. This model itself has been sitting in my stash now for a little over a year, so it's going to be really good to finally dig into this one and get it built. Now the model itself, for anyone who's a frequent viewer of this channel and see a IMAX box in this condition, you probably know where I'm going to be going with this. And if you do, awesome, you definitely watch my videos. Because this model here started off as a scratch and dent special purchase. Tagantanks.com is a US based website that sells all of the Tagan branded and Toro branded 116 scale ready to run tank models as well as the Tagan aftermarket detail hop ups and upgrades that are offered by the company. I've purchased a lot of my models and hop up parts through them and in fact if you are in the United States and you're looking for not only tanks but also the Tagan upgrade parts. TakenTanks.com should be the very first source you check out. And on a similar note, TakenTanks.com is really nothing more than the storefront for the IMAX Plastic Model Company to exclusively sell the Tegan and Toro branded models. You see, IMAX is the US importer of these models, as well as many other plastic model kits. They're located out in Florida and chances are really good that if you were ever in a hobby shop or some other store and you encounter one of these Tegan tanks and if you see this box here, chances are really good that they purchased it wholesale from the IMX Plastic Model Company. Like I stated before, the model has been sitting in my stash now for a little over a year and was purchased from the TaganTanks.com scratch and dent special section on their website. Listed below, you can see a link that will take you directly to their page where you get to see what kits are currently in stock at any given time. One thing that I really like about their website is that they do have a special section just for broken models. You see, you can purchase the model from them in a completely intact, brand new condition and the models are basically guaranteed to run. However, one really cool thing that TaganTanks.com offers is that if they have a broken model in one way, shape, or form or another, they list it on their scratch and dent section with a reduced price in an as-is format. This is a fantastic way to get into a Tegan model for a little less money and also for a person like myself, 
it's great because I like to rebuild and repaint and detail the model anyway. For me to pay full price for a brand new, fully airbrushed variant, it's not really something that I have a whole lot of interest in. But if I find one in wrecked condition, it is a perfect candidate for me to then build upon creating the type of models that I've posted on this channel numerous times in the past. However, this awesomeness does come with a snag, and due to the nature of these models, the type of kits, as well as their condition and price, is not set in stone and varies throughout the months. Sometimes there's actually nothing posted and the page doesn't exist. Other times there are a dozen or so models that are in various conditions and also various types. So this is the type of thing where you really want to pay attention to and constantly monitor it every so often because Basically, it's at the luck of the draw. It's at a first come first serve basis and if you find something there that you really like, purchase it because chances are really good. It's probably not gonna be there for much longer. So anyway, the model was purchased and this is exactly the way that it arrives. The cardboard box that has the IMX logo is the actual shipping carton that has the addresses on it and the packaging for the the retail box art and the other info is all found on the inside. I did test this model when it first came in just to do a quick rundown on what needs to be done and if there's any need for any other mechanical replacement components. And after I did a quick little test run, the model's been sealed up and off into the sash it sat. Let's flip this guy over and here you can see the retail box that these kits all come in. Obviously, the box art is very, very simplistic. Actually, there's no box art at all. And this is quite typical for the Tagit brand of tanks that I've seen throughout the years. We have here just a standard photograph of a sample unit of the model. In this case, it's a M4A3 76mm Sherman. Here you can see the IMAX logo here in the corner. Tagen tanks. Now I believe this is different on many of the other foreign, i.e. European, marketed versions of these kits. I believe the logo and printing over here is a bit different, but for these models here, they follow always in this format. You can see the other verbiage that's found on the box, basically telling you what the what features are on this model. Box itself is in really good condition. One thing I notice about the models that are shipped from TaganTanks.com is that they do a really good job with the packaging. So that's always one benefit from ordering through them. Some more of the branding. Again, nothing really much to write home about. It's a very simplistic box, if there ever was one. So from here, let's go ahead and take off the outer carton and get into the actual model itself. Continue with the branding, we have here an inner sarcophagus. More verbiage found on the top and sides, I guess to make it seem a little bit more fancier. And when I crack it open, you'll be able to see the actual model on the inside. First thing greeting us is the instruction sheet along with a little target section here, which is interesting because I believe this model was the infrared one, but I actually, I might be mistaken. It's been a while since I've actually opened it up. Pretty standard. Okay, here we have our 7.2 battery recharger, which is quite customary on these RTR models, along with a battery. These batteries here, it, they're really good to help get, get you off the ground. However, generally on my builds, I always swap these out for a battery of higher quality, which has more milliamps on it compared to these ones here. But if you just want something to get you running, these batteries here work pretty well. We have here a box of Airsoft BBs, so apparently I believe this might actually be the Airsoft firing rendition. This box over here with the Japanese, no it's actually a French AMX-30, which is kind of interesting choice of vehicle, since no one really makes one, but anyway, here we have some other components that get added to the surface, such as we have here some spare track links, which are always nice. A ball here with the smoke fluid, quite customary. A Peeping Tom US tank figure, complete with binoculars. M2 HB 50 caliber machine gun, as well as a tow hitch and 
yeah, just a few other small little bits. Digging down deeper, takes to the actual model itself as well as some other goodies. This section here, we have just some bubble wrap, which is nice, it keeps the model in place and prevents it from jittering around a bit. And I get the radio out? Nah, let's get the tank out first. So now this takes us to the actual tank itself. As you can see, the tank is in a nice little bubble wrap envelope. And digging down deeper takes us to the radio. This is the T5 rendition. Doesn't have that little machine gun button which is found on the newer versions of this radio. And hopefully this should be in working order when I take the, when the model progresses past this point here. Oh, normally, I just want to point out that these sticks are not pre-mounted to the radio. And generally, when you, you get these models, the radio is in this type of format, and these are in a little baggie found in the battery compartment. This is more than likely left over or residual from when I opened the tank up when I first got it to take it for a test spin. So, generally, I just, just super glue these in place, but more information on that is to come. And that's really it for the box. So now... Let's go ahead and take the tank out of the bubble wrap. Well, immediately at a quick glance, you're gonna see exactly why this model is a scratch and dent. The upper hull here is not matching the turret as well as the lower. Normally, when you purchase these tanks new, the model is all encompassing with a paint job on it and everything blends in for better or for worse. This model here, what more than likely happened, the original upper hull was probably damaged in shipping at one point or another. So Tegan, when it, or Tegan Tanks in the US probably just took one of their upper hulls, which they do sell separately, and just threw it onto this model here, selling it in this format. I'm pretty sure at this point here, my subscribers are scratching their heads and feeling a sense of deja vu, and that's actually for good reason. You see, recently I completed another 116 scale scratch and dent rebuild, and that model was another Sherman, but it was a 75 millimeter M4A3, as opposed to this version here with the T23 turret and the 76 millimeter gun. Just like this model, that one also came in the similar state that we have here, where the upper hull was replaced due to the original one more than likely being damaged at some point during the model's life, more likely during shipping. The Tank and Sherman kits themselves do have a very interesting story in their own right. You see, the kits technically date back to about the 2011 and 12 time frame. Around that time, Henlong released their very first M4 Sherman-based kit. Only their kit was an M4A3-105. What's interesting about that kit was that this was really one of the first kits that Hen Long created with 100% of their own tooling. You see, previously, the models that Hen Long would create were basically nothing more than copied renditions of Tamiya 116 scale tanks that were already on the market. This was seen on their first and second generation kits, which would include their Tiger and their Pershing for their first gen. Second gen would include kits such as the Panther Alpha G and the Jagd Panther. Other than that, the kits that Hen Long would release with their own tooling were definitely very flawed. Such kits would be the M41 Walker Bulldog as well as the Panther Alpha A. The problem with these kits was that Hen Long tried to cut some corners and save some money on research and development costs by developing a upper and lower hull and a turret, but for the running gear, they recycled components from the other kits. Namely, on the M41 Walker Bulldog, you have the running gear, the road wheels, of the M26 Pershing, while on the Panther Alpha A, you have the entire lower pan of the Tiger I. Because of this, the models were heavily flawed and, in my opinion, are completely useless. If you're thinking about getting a Henlong or even a Tegan M41 Walker Bulldog or the Panther Alpha A, don't. Those models are just beyond hope. Unless you're just looking for a beater or something to play around with. If you're looking for a scale detail model, avoid them like the plague. They're just, they're just crap in that regard. However, all of that changed, again, in around the 2010 time period. The M4 Sherman was one of the first kits that they developed that 
didn't use or borrow any other sort of tooling from the other kits and it was all 100% their tooling. And because of that, they were able to release a 116 scale fully radio controlled Sherman of a hull variant that was different from the old school Tamiya one and for a price point that was extremely affordable. It was honestly the perfect kit to make in 116 scale. With that kit, you can bounce off and make a number of different Sherman renditions. Just with the completed hull turret and lower hull that we have. But if you like to tamper around with replacement parts and resin, such as conversion sets, you can really have a lot of fun with those. In fact, I've done a few builds on this channel where I've taken that kit and enhanced it to other features. But again, that's, <laughs> that's something for another day. Anyway, so... Henlong did very well with that Sherman. Well, shortly around that time, another 116 scale tank company was also coming online called Tagen. The Tagen kits really take many of the models from Henlong and polish them up to their really final end result. If you look at the Tiger One, for instance, it is very much improved from the version from Henlong, but you still definitely see some Henlong traces on it, which if you wanna know what those are, watch some of my other videos because I do go into more depth about that. Same was also done with the Sherman here. The Sherman is very similar to the Henlong variant, but Hen Tegan went ahead and polished up further, making it for a better model. We'll be going over that in a second. Another thing I want to point out was that Tegan wisely chose not to make the same variant that Henlong did. Rather than going with the 105 millimeter equipped version of the M4A3, which was the Henlong variant, Tegan went ahead and released a Sherman in two different flavors. Flavor number one is a standard 75 millimeter gun equipped M4A3. And this variant that we have here came out about a year or two later, which is the 76 millimeter T23 turreted variant of the M4A3. With the camera off of the tripod, it allows me better access to show many of the model's features and details with better access. Now, if anyone who built a lot of 135s are seeing the surface quality and detailing on here and getting a sense of deja vu, well, there's a good reason for that. You see, detailing-wise, the Henlong model was heavily influenced and basically just straight up copied and scaled up the Tamiya 135th scale M4A3 Sherman tank hull kit. Well, in Han Long's case, specifically the 105 variant. But that kit, again, goes back to the 80s. And you could see a lot of that type of detailing features found on this model. It's one of those things where, guys, if you've built the Tamiya one, you'll exactly know what I'm referring to. Like the bulbous areas here on the front, which on the real Sherman are correct and would be cast. But even with the look and the layout of the tools, it's straight off to me at 135. Same could also be said about the grill work with the molded in handles and all. Even the rear storage rack. Continuing, you can see more of the similarities, such as the side skirt mounting rail. The fact that they only molded in one tow cable cleat, as opposed to the second one, which would be right there on top of the hull. The front detailing like the brush guards, the lift ring, and even the travel lock, all have that 1980s to me a flair to it. They did make one modification. They added the little fender support here. That is absent on the Tamiya kits and also on the headlongs, and that is definitely a Tegan edition, and is one that is actually nicely done. Note the bow hatches which are molded in the shut position as they are on the Hemlong variant as well. Moving further back takes us to the rear and takes us to the rear deflector grill. Now this was something that Tegan has changed from their original kit releases. You see, the if you go back to the other M4A3 video that I've done, their deflector grill did not look like this one here. This is a newly designed part. The original deflector grill was identical to the one found on the Henlong tank, and in that one's case was identical to the one used on the, you guessed it, Tamiya M4A3. Complete with how it connects to the hull, how it's missing its rear hull sections, 
which is also a trademark found on the Tamiya Old School M4A3 kit as well. If you notice, the deflector grill is just dangling here in space and is connected to this rear plate with this tab. This is identical on the Henlong and Tamiya models. But what Tegan went ahead and did was they took the rear deflector grill design and changed it, improving the detailing on it basically in every single way. If anyone has ever watched my 1-6 scale M4A3 Sherman videos, you'll know exactly what I'm referring to when I talk about how these grills are meant to look. You see, these grills are actually meant to fold away and tuck into this cavity over here, which I'll be going over once I crack the model open and actually start building it. But because of that, they do have this rounded shape. And you'll see that on the middle section here, actually indents into the grill. The fins are not parallel and indent slightly over here. There is this little other inset found on this section. Impressively enough, Tegan went ahead and also rendered in the little retracting lever, which would pivot out and would allow you to actually hinge this unit in place. And they even did the locking peg. You see when it hinges in place, there's this little lever that we have here, and you would push it in and it would secure the, the flip grill into its location preventing it from swinging down and hitting the maintenance guy that has to get access to the rear plate in the back. So in this regard here, these newer production kits from Tegan are a huge improvement over the older style tooling. However, it's important to point out that the older style tooling is still on the market and it's not uncommon to encounter one in the wild. And if you see the older grill, you'll know exactly what version you have. Moving to the model suspension, just like with the other RTR models on the market, this model here does have a fully functional spring suspension system. Now, on the suspension, it is much more improved and more evolved compared to the renditions found on the Henlong counterparts. All the suspension parts on these taking kits are made from die cast metal. This includes the housings, the swing arms, as well as even the row wheels. A nice trick that the row wheels do have is that not only are they made from metal, but they have real rubber tires found on them. You see on the Hen, on the Henlong renditions, the tire is and the wheels all molded as one piece, and the rubber tire is something that you actually have to paint. On the Tegan models, that's not the case. Also, I want to point out that these wheels are offered, as well as the whole suspension set, are offered on the TegenTanks.com website and the wheels can directly drop onto the Henlong model without any other changes being necessary. One other feature I want to point out is that with the row wheels on this model here, they represent the late pattern stamped row wheel and the other versions that Tegan does also offer on their models and you could buy as an aftermarket set are the even later solid dish pattern row wheels that are also seen on late pattern era of Sherman's. A similar thing can also be stated on their sprocket. The sprockets on the Shermans really had two flavors. You had the open spoke variant here and the close spoke variant. The close spoke variant was present on my M4A3 model and this one here clearly has the open rendition. Again, if you want to change this out, this is something that can also be purchased from Tegan. Moving to the tracks, the tracks on these Tegan Shermans are both really awesome and they suck all at the same time. Where they get it right is with the material choices that they use. These tracks here are all made from die cast metal and the material is exquisite. It's nice and durable, it's got some good weight to it, and they have some really nice detailing. They have the look, the feel of the proper track, and this variant here, if you notice, has the duckbill extenders, which is, again, another option that they offered on their website if you want ones that are just slimmer in profile that are duckbill list. So that's all the good news. The bad news with them is also again the material choice or more than likely it's the track pattern of choice. You see on the real Sherman tank this track did exist however it was made from rubber. It's known as the rubber chevron type track which means this entire front face here and the back face is made from you guessed it rubber. Now why this is a problem for me is that when you are driving the model, no matter what type of paint you use, this section here will inevitably scratch and chip, revealing metal underneath. And for me, unfortunately, I can't live with that. It's just too much of a continuity error. Call me what you want, say what you want, but in the end, I'm not using these tracks. So 
If I had one recommendation for Tegan, would be please develop steel patterns of the Sherman track because I, if they made these tracks with a steel Chevron, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Those, tra those tracks would have been amazing and they would have been used. So just like on my other Sherman build, I'm going to be replacing the tracks with a set from Matto. The Matto tracks are very nicely done and will mount to the Tegan tank. Unfortunately, to do that, you need to make one modification and that's to the sprocket. You see, the two designs are not interchangeable. You cannot have Matto track with a Tegan sprocket and vice versa. So because that, the sprockets are going to need to be pitched. And why this is also a problem is because the Matto Sherman sprockets are not as good as the Tegan ones. Where the outer face is fine, but if you look at the way the Matto sprocket is designed on the inside, it has a bell shape to it. And on the Sherman, that's just not the case. Tegan did appropriately, but unfortunately the track is a bigger issue for me compared to the sprocket. So... It's the, point, it's the less, it's lesser of two evils that I'm picking on these builds. Moving to the transmission cover, this is one bit of detailing that Tegan did improve from the last rendition. Namely, with these two areas over here, you'll notice that Tegan on this rendition molded in the little footsteps, which on the real tank is how you would mount and climb onto the tank. And they also went ahead and gave you little U-shackles. These were all absent on the last release. On the front portion here, one benefit of the Tegan over the Henlong is how Tegan went ahead and rendered out the front transmission bolt strip. You see on the Henlong, this unit here is integrally molded to the upper hull and because of that you will have this unsightly seam that is found on this section. Now that is not a permanent issue because I actually address that and I talk about how I repair that in other videos. However, on the Tegan model here, it's one less thing you have to worry about. That basically wraps up the hull and that leads us to the turret. The turret itself, from what I can see, appears to be all 100% original tooling from Tegan. I don't think it's lifted or influenced from any other 116 or smaller rendition of the Sherman. The turret is comprised of two halves, just like what is commonly seen on these models. And on this model here, the lower portion is actually made from plastic, but the upper half is made from die cast, which does give the model some significant heft. The overall size, dimensions, and detailing look actually pretty good. I like the way that they integrally molded in some rough cast texturing. This will enhance the model, specifically when I add some more cast texturing on top of it. It gives it a nice little base. The blower in the back is the appropriate size and shape. And again, they actually did a really nice job on the turret. Now, note this is the early rendition of the T23. And why this is different is with the roof layout. You'll see that this one here has actually two type of cupolas. For the loader's hatch, we have a split hatch. And the commander has a standard late panoramic pattern of cupola. This, of course, would be changed when the T23 turret was redesigned. And they replaced this version of the cupola with the oval loader's hatch, which is typically seen on other US AFV of the period. One interesting quirk that I do notice, however, is the antenna base is basically a British pattern where it's this large rubber cone and then the wire would emerge from it. I don't know why they went with that route, but it's just an interesting quirk that I noticed and wanted to point out. Back to the hatches, unlike the other rendition where the oval loader's hatch is permanently molded into the roof of the turret, on this rendition here, that's not the case. They're actually fully functional and open up. On this model here, we can clearly see that this is the airsoft rendition. It has that ramp built in. This is actually how you would load the airsoft gun. And we have here a little kill switch for the airsoft, which is customary and found on basically all of these airsoft equipped RTR models. Hashes themselves are made of die cast metal and do have some nice weight and heft to them. And the whole model itself is actually pretty chunky and that's because of all the other metal parts that I'll show once I take the top hull off of the vehicle. Moving along brings to the mantlet. The mantlet does have some good geometry to it, as well as some nice cast texturing. From there brings to the main gun and the muzzle brake. The muzzle brake, in my opinion, is a bit on the cheesier end. It does give you the overall look and feel of the 76 millimeter muzzle brake, but I don't know, this is definitely gonna be something I'm going to address once I crack and dig into this build a little further. Well, that basically wraps up all the external detail and fittings and that now leads us to the inside, but in order for me to get into this model, I need to first... It popped the hood. 
Pop the hood. Pop the hood. Which on the Tegan models is a very easy thing to do. You see, one nice feature that the Tegan tanks have over the Hen Longs is you can take apart the upper and lower hulls without any tools required. On all of the Tegan tanks, they have a spring-loaded latch mechanism found on this location here of the model. And this is true for all of their tanks from what I've seen, from the Panther to the Tiger to the King Tiger. All of this is done with the same way. And there's a small little spring-loaded latch. You can see it right over there. You hit that. It moves this little bar on the inside. And once that is, once that is moved, the entire rear deck, or I should say the entire upper hull, pops directly off. With the top off, you can now get a better view of the electronics. Basically, all the electronics here are stock for the Tegan tanks, but one thing I do want to point out is that this model does come with the upgraded steel ball bearing gearbox, which is a very nice feature that is built into this model. In fact, this same type of gearbox, like I've mentioned before, I've actually used to upgrade many other 116 scale tanks from other manufacturers, and they just drop directly in. It's a nice feature that it comes with this model. Also with the top off, you can get to see the lower pan and this entire section here, transmission cover included, is all made from die cast metal. Because of that, this gives the model a lot of weight to it. The model itself on the carton states that weighs 19 pounds and you could definitely see that once you pick up and try to maneuver one of these models. The Henlong is a fraction of the weight of this, which can be a benefit and a problem depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for more scale accurate weight and speed, this is something that would be a better fit. If you're looking for just a lightweight model to drive and zip around and have fun with, perhaps the Henlong might be something better tailored for that type of need. Here we have the battery box and the 7.2 just slides directly in place. Your smoke generator, your CPU, and your speaker. Everything is all plug and play, and it's something that if you don't properly label during your build, you can easily mix up and forget where things go. So that's always a thing that I recommend doing. On the turret, this model does feature a 360 degree rotating turret. You can tell it doesn't have that little tab that would be present on this location here, which is found on typical 180 degree turns. And this also has a slip ring just to prevent the wires from tangling up. Although I want to point out what's interesting about the Tegan Shermans is because of the shape of the hull, there's no space to actually mount the slip ring in this little well that we have here. The slip ring just sits loose into the hull and basically prevents it from spooling up. If you're working on something with a larger diameter hull like a Tiger One or a King Tiger, don't be surprised if this guy here needs to be mounted in that little well that's found on this ring. Other than that, the model features the standard type of functions, which include tart rotation, gun elevation, machine gun fire for the bow. This one does have the airsoft gun, like I mentioned before, and it has functional rear and bow headlights and taillights. To put the model back together, you just simply take this little tongue that we have here, insert it underneath the rivet strip, like so, and then the rear portion just hinges downward and snaps into place with a nice loud audible click. Once you have that, you're all set and ready to run. Well, since the last scene was shot, I went ahead and brought the vehicle to the shop here where I have another 7.2 battery on hand that looks to have a little bit more juice in it so I could take the model for a proper test drive. Also, please excuse the condition of the shop floor. It is an active shop after all. So with the battery mounted to the battery tray that I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the tank on. Of course, this is done by first turning on the radio, making sure that this switch is in the off state. If I didn't mention before, this tank obviously has some switches down here. This one here is the main power. This is the smoke system shutoff. And this one here is the volume. So now I'm going to go ahead. You can hear the humming of the fan. Let's go ahead and start her up. So 
the sound system seems to be working properly. I, I don't have to change that out. On some of these scratch and dents, a lot of times, or I should say occasionally, you end up on with a corrupted sound audio motherboard. This one appears to be okay. drive seems to be functional and has a good strong power to it. Let's try the turret. Rotation seems to work. This tank does of course have the 360 turret rotation system which is a nice feature. Try the gun elevation. Working without any problems. And the airsoft. And that looks to be working too. I don't have any BBs on hand, so I can't really test that out. Uh, this, of course, is a machine gun. And we got dual uh, we got dual LEDs actioning on this one. One in the bow, one here in the midlet. Unfortunately, it would have been better if this LED was in this location, because that's where it is on the real vehicle. But maybe that's going to be something I'm going to be messing with once I crack open into this build. And with that, that wraps up part one of this four-part video series on this 116 scale radio-controlled M4A3 76mm Sherman. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep updated on new posted content being, well, the other parts for this particular series, not to mention the other smaller and larger scale builds that are posted on this channel. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There I have more photographs of this particular build as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been showcased on this channel in the past. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for more 116 and 16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks again, and I'll be catching you all again on part two. See you there.